Hello, thank you so much for having me here um, all the way from North Carolina in the United States, as well as um, the company that I'm working for, Allard USA, which I guess is Camp Scandinavia to you all here. Nana Karobi Yaoki. And I apologize if anyone in the audience speaks Japanese, and I've just butchered that translation, but basically it's a Japanese proverb, fall down seven times, get up eight, and it speaks to the concept of resilience. No matter how many times you get knocked down, you get up again. If you should fail 1,000 times, you must keep getting up and trying again. Interestingly, when looking for an image for this statement, right next to it was this one, never give up, which in a way can reflect the breakfast club theme for this month. When you're struggling to beat the odds and the challenges seem endless, it's very easy to question, is it worth it? So the marketing campaign that I'm here to share with you today begins with a bit of my personal history. For most of my life, I had always been an athlete, whether it was tennis, soccer, skiing, softball, or running. There was never a season when I was not involved in sport. As I got older, it was really difficult to find organized sports that fit well with my time and career, so I took up endurance running. For long-distance runners, there is one race that everyone dreams of entering, and that is the Boston Marathon. And I was so lucky to have been able to qualify for this race and run it in 2002 and in 2003. I fell in love with this marathon, and I had plans to train really hard to be at the top of my age group in 2004. Then one morning in 2004, my world was to be changed forever. I collapsed in pain onto my kitchen floor and was rushed to the hospital. The neurosurgeon that operated on me, it was a nine-hour surgery, described it as a perfect storm of spinal birth defects which had gone undetected my entire life. The slow convergence of spina bifida occulta and spondylolisthesis. For those of you who don't know what those are, they're pretty serious when they're together. Along with conjoined nerve roots and ruptured discs, um, all of this convergence required discectomies and implantation of titanium cages, rods, and screws to fuse the vertebrae in my lower spine. So that hardware you see is still in my back, and I've since added a few more accessories in my cervical spine. One of the side effects of my injuries was foot drop, which is partial paralysis, and for me it occurred in my left leg. I was fitted with this very lovely plastic brace. Not only was it unattractive, it was extremely clumsy and really painful. It did not allow me to return to my athletic life. While some people may not consider foot drop to be a serious disability, for those who have it, we know that this can be an overwhelming challenge. When your mobility is taken away, so are so many opportunities. Foot drop can have a devastating effect in your career, your relationships, your family, and in your daily life. In many ways, we are all shaped by our activities and our passions. And when your passions are taken away, you can suddenly feel lost. This happened to me, and I suffered depression as a result. About a year or so into this wonderful new life with foot drop, something happened that made me realize how much my sadness was affecting my family. Before then, I never realized just how much they were hurting for me. They were really good not to show it, but one day I saw it in my sister's face when she started crying for me. I'm getting emotional now because every time I think of that moment, I go right back to that place, and that was about 11 years ago. So I decided when I realized that, that I was not going to give up, if not for me, at least for those people who loved me. <laughs> Thank you. 
So it took almost 18 more months of searching, but finally I found a brace made here in, it's made in Sweden about an hour south in, Helsing, uh, in Malmo. And the company is owned by Peter Allard, and he lives here in Helsingborg. So this brace that changed my life is called a carbon composite fiber dynamic response floor reaction AFO. Did I get that right to <laughs> my supervisor? Um, it's, it's super lightweight amazingly responsive. I put it on in my orthotist's office after trying so many other alternatives and I started crying. I know it's hard for you to believe now that I'm a crier. But um, my orthotist said, don't worry Beth, we'll keep trying, we'll find something. And I said, no, you don't understand. These are happy tears. This is going to work for me. So once again, my life was to change. With my new brace, I knew I could set my sights on running. Not only running, but I was determined to get back to the Boston Marathon to prove that I could get back up. Four months after receiving this brace, after two, more than two years not being able to do anything, I found myself at the starting line of the Chicago Marathon. In that race, I qualified for Boston with my fastest marathon time ever. Thanks. This would not have been possible without my new brace, again, which I found through Allard. With the plastic race, I couldn't run for more than a few minutes without getting blistered and bloody. And yet, with my toe off, I could run marathons. I later found out that this product had been available in the U.S. at that time and for years before. Why didn't my orthotist or my doctor know that this was available? Well, I discovered through my own journey that there is a great disconnect in a patient's overall health care and that often the doctors, the physical therapists, the orthotists, they all receive only a small slice of the overall pie. So a small slice of information, anyway, in that overall pie. So, Carol Paez, the head of Allard USA at the time, asked me to share my story with each of these groups. And I decided to share, to join in her mission to increase public awareness of this new technology so that those other people out there who had not yet found it could also get back up. At that time, I was still working full-time for another company, but several times a year I would attend conferences and national meetings for physical therapists and physicians, and I would share my story. Obviously, we had some fun, too. That was me running the Orlando Disney World Marathon. So over the next few years, we would send press releases to all related professional publications, and many times we had success getting our story into print. You'll see that it says at the very bottom, I'm not out to change the world. I was out to change my world. Yet, in the process of sharing this story, I was helping others to do the same thing. I would get email and phone calls from people who read a particular article that had been published, and they all wanted to know how I did it and how they too could get back up. This early success in raising the level of awareness convinced me that this personal mission of mine should become a professional mission. Thus, a marketing plan was born. In January of 2012, I joined Allard USA full-time, and we brainstormed on how to get my story to a wider audience. We were hoping to make it easier for future patients to get better access to information about the toe-off, which of course ultimately would lead to increased sales for Allard USA. So I think this is a good time to just recap my personal story, um, my journey to darkness and back into the light um, really was having an effect on changing people's lives. The simple act of sharing the story was making those connections. So we, sorry, we eventually go back, uh, elected uh, to shift our focus then from the professional 
medical professionals to marketing to them to trying to reach the consumers directly. We hired a PR firm, Bouvier Kelly, which is based in North Carolina, to assist us with this mission. Our goals were to establish positive awareness among consumers, their doctors, the insurance policy makers about the benefits and the superiority of the product that I was wearing. We wanted to educate the patients and the doctors about the proper care and fitting of these braces, which is very important. And we wanted to create and nurture a community of people that could talk about their experiences and eventually become loyal ambassadors just like I had become. But what was the best way to reach these consumers? We theorized that we could possibly use the U.S. media outlets to increase our vis visibility and to boost toe-off sales. Our hook or focal point to attract this media coverage was my participation throughout the year in a 22 race schedule of half marathons that were part of a well-established and very visible rock and roll marathon series. These took place across the U.S. and in Canada. So why were we competing in these marathon series? We wanted to develop a compelling story that traditional media outlets would want to share with their audiences, but at the same time, we wanted to generate inspirational content for interacting with our target audience, the patients, um, through social media outlets. We created multiple Get Back Up Today social media sites, including Facebook, Twitter, and more recently, Pinterest. We have a blog. We also created a brochure to inform our OMP customers, the orthotists and the prosthetists, about our campaign, and we wanted them to feel like they could be involved in this process as well. And finally, we decided to reach out to support groups because this was another fantastic way to get consumers to ask for an Allard brace. In particular, we formed great partnerships with Charco Marie Tooth Association and the National Stroke Association. Both people with these conditions often have the symptom of foot drop. Next, we created a website, and bear with me, I hope this link works. Oops, Carol. <laughs> Help, oh, right, I think I got it. I just like making her do things for me. <laughs> Sorry, I think I got it. <laughs> Apologize. <laughs> So this is our website, and uh, if you go to this, we've, I'm not going to go through all of it, but there is a link of frequently asked questions, because as people were contacting me, reaching out to me, I was answering the same questions over and over again, and I realized my story was not unique. In fact, there were hundreds and hundreds of people wanting the information that I eventually found on my own. So we, we keep updating with more questions. We have a press room, um, which not only lends um, a little bit of credibility to what we're doing, because all of these are linked on real uh, links to real news stories, um, newspapers, and television news programs, but also it is showing you here that our marketing plan was working. You can meet each member of the team. You click on any of their, their stories and you will get, um, or you click on their images and you'll get their stories. On the home page, we also, if I can scroll down, well, you'll have to trust me. There's a map at the bottom of our home page and it is populated with blue dots. And each one of these blue dots, oh, I think I found mystery answer. Oh, okay, there we go. So you can click on each one of those blue dots is a real person who's voluntarily put their name. Sometimes they don't put their name. We don't ask. We don't want to um, have them feel like they're compromising their privacy. But they tell their story. And the more that we've had this active, you'll see more and more people um, are sharing their stories. And so many people can go on without signing up and read just so that they can get information if they're too scared or cautious to put their name on right away. But this has been a wonderful resource. Um, what it also has done, uh, we've put links to all of Allard's information directly. A patient can click and immediately know who to contact in their zip code, in their area, 
whatever city they're in. So we've made it super easy for anybody looking for information to get it. So getting media coverage. Uh, sorry, let me find my place. What we do in, in order to do this, prior to each event, again, I was running 22 half marathons in one year, and we would send a press release directly to the city telling um, the potential reporters what I was doing, why I was in the city, and talking about my success. And then as each weekend approached, they would follow up, Vivier Kelly, RPR, would far, will follow up with phone calls and really just hope to get one or two reporters interested. What were the results? As you can see, we already, you saw some of the links of the press results. Well, it resulted in 60 pounds or 27 kilos of medals and counting. <laughs> Uh, and this is a fun visual, but actually to us it's never been about the medals. It's always been about the message. To me, I like to think that every medal I collect is 10 more people getting back up. Getting media coverage is not guaranteed. Just because you send the reporters the story um, doesn't mean you're going to get their attention. It depends on whether there's breaking national or local news, other events going on in the city that may compete. Are there major stories which an editor might consider more worthy than ours? Really? Better than my story? Um, it depends on the level of interest or concern of the reporter, and it really does depend on having a spokesperson, which often at the beginning was me, on the ground, on call in every city. Um, we also have our team up co-captains doing that now. Here is one example. Cross my fingers and hope it plays. Okay. Thank you all for your patience. Oh, I messed it up. Try this again. All right, Carol, I don't see the arrow. I'm going to get, oh, 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 you're going to have to learn to wait for me. Okay, you might want to stay here. I do, I do. I'm trying. There we go. Volume. Okay. In the background, I'm telling my story. Okay, how do you escape? Like from this part of my toes over, and I have a little feeling on those two toes. What I'll say is this is a great teaser. Go to our website. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on a time limit. <laughs> but you can go and see. It was just one example of a reporter coming in. They asked me to run back and forth. I'm wearing a mic like this, usually tucked somewhere inconspicuously. But the story airs, and we can tell that the story has aired often before we've seen it because I start getting emails and phone calls from people who want to hear our story. We've gotten newspaper and magazine articles in print. Plenty of online publications as well, which certainly broadens the reach. Here is an example of a radio interview that we got. Marathon, and you've run plenty of others, despite having a, a, a medical condition that many people might think would, would keep you from doing this kind of stuff. Tell us about it a little bit. Yeah, I have a condition called foot drop, which is very common. People get it for all kinds of different reasons, but it's basically a paralysis of your foot and ankle, and mine was caused by a spinal cord injury. So, and you said it's pretty common. How, how common are we talking about? We don't know the exact numbers because people aren't usually diagnosed with just foot drop. It's usually a combination um, problem that can happen from MS, from charcot marie tooth disease, spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury, stroke. So we think the numbers are probably in the millions worldwide, but easily hundreds of thousands of people have this. Okay, and, and you said, and I've read, that some people have this and, and don't know they have it. So what would be the main symptom or two that a person might say, this sounds like maybe I need to ask a doctor if I've got this problem? Exactly. Um, the main problem actually is a weakness or tripping and falling. It's how people normally 
um, discover it. They feel like all of a sudden they've gotten clumsy or weak on one side. Sometimes it's both sides. But um, a lot of times, again, they don't know that that is a specific condition called foot drop, and there's a lot of things that you can do to help correct that and manage it so it doesn't become worse or lead to another problem like serious falling. So were you a marathon runner, an active long-distance runner, before you you were diagnosed with foot drop? I was. I had really just fallen in love with the sport and qualified for the Boston Marathon. And, you know, sure enough, I run Boston. And right after that, I started experiencing the symptoms. It goes on. It goes on. Actually, in here, Beth does a great job because oftentimes they won't let you say the name of the product. But I don't want to waste the time on that. But actually, at the end, she gets towards it. And it happened to be the allard toe off. So. <laughs> <laughs> I did not get a bonus for that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's an example. And again, we were told that we would have two minutes. I, had, I was driving. I got the call. I'm on call that weekend. I had to pull over on the side of the highway, call in. They said two minutes. That reporter happened to be interested. Later, I found out his mother had had a foot drop after a stroke. So he extended the interview, and I think it was six and a half minutes. So let me find my place. Okay, so during the the 2012 debut of our Get Back Up campaign, I met hundreds of other people with physical challenges that had been able to get back up, thanks not only to the toe-off, but to our direct marketing efforts. And they were continually asking how they could help get the message out there. On a volunteer basis, they wanted to help promote this product. So we took advantage of their offer and created Team Up, a team of co-captains that would extend our reach to the public by sharing their own stories through events and media. Here is Team Up video and... Is it not going to play if I put it in full screen mode? drop due to some spinal trauma. The last year of my life I've been trying to go across the country and raise awareness for people with mobility issues. I knew when this happened to me that I couldn't be the only one, the only athlete with foot drop. My name is Craig Boatsberger. I am disabled. In 2001 during an Army National Guard training exercise I was standing between two Humvees when they hit. I am Shannon Portinga from Kalamazoo, Michigan. I have had foot drop for, it'll be two years, coming up this summer. Hi, my name is Darren Smith, and I was diagnosed with brown support syndrome, which includes uh, something called foot drop. My name is Virginia Malone. I am from Las Vegas, Nevada. I have a neuromuscular disorder called Tarcomary Tooth. Hi, I'm Jill Walsh. I'm from Syracuse, New York, and uh, I have MS, that's why I have foot drop. Hi, I'm Barbie Barnett, and I have foot drop resulting from back surgery. I'm Rod Fulmer, and I have FSH muscular dystrophy, which causes foot drop. Foot drop's a condition in which the muscles no longer will allow the foot to stay in a neutral position. So when it drops downward in what we call plantar flexion, it's very easy to trip or fall just because of that weakness that you have in ability to lift the foot up. This is the first week ever that I've been with this many people with foot drop in one event. We're like a family. It's been incredible. And uh, I can't even imagine my life without these people now. I was asked by Beth Deloria to be part of Team Up so we can help promote awareness to people with foot drop that you don't just have to sit around and and do nothing. I met a great doctor who introduced me to the Allen Blue Rocker. It's the braces I wear on my legs when I compete and I train and I exercise and it enabled me to run. The toe-off brace has made such a huge difference for me in just being able to go out and walk. Keeping up with my daughter, uh, it's, you know, going to the mall with her, going shopping, going grocery shopping and just pretty much having your life back. They order a Blue Rocker for me and since then I've been wearing it 
competed in two world championships. I've won Canadian national championships wearing it, and I've run faster than I ever have before. Running doesn't seem like a big deal, and I would not have thought it would have been that big a deal to me, but once I got foot drop and I couldn't do the things that I really loved, um, I realized how much my identity was shaped by what I did, and so running was a part of who I was. Ever since I got my brace from Allard, I've just regain my life back. I can do simple things that people take for granted. I was one person trying to spread a message and now we've got eight of us trying to spread the same message and we're all going to go home to our different corners of the country and share the, the positivity that comes out of not giving up and getting back up. So Peter Allard's directive to us has always been to work smart, work hard, and have fun. I follow his directives, and as you can see, especially to have fun. So now I'm going to do a very quick uh, review of the results we've got. This year alone, we did 27 advertising pitches, which resulted in 17 print articles, 15 television interviews, and one radio interview, which you heard, which is a potential reach of 50 million impressions. In social media, we've had tremendous growth each year in all of our outlets, including a Facebook following of over 26,000 fans, and this continues to grow on a daily basis. Obviously, the, me the message has been important to a lot of us. From 2012 to 2015, our focus was on obtaining local media coverage at every event that we participated in. This year, we have three team-up co-captains that are in the running for the 2016 International Paralympics in Rio de Janeiro. We feel this is national media worthy, so we transitioned our focus to be more aggressive in the national market. We're trying to target um, TV programs, newspapers, magazine publications, as well as talk shows and health-related publications. Two weeks ago, oh, let's go back. This is a sample of one of the messages that we're going to pitch. Three Paralympic hopefuls go well past their personal limitations. Can you imagine this in USA Today or in People Magazine? Two weeks ago, in Women's Running Magazine, we got our first national hit of the year where Virginia Mamone was featured. And for the financial people in the audience, which I'm sure is all of you if you're involved in business, how do we determine what our budget plan is for this campaign? And it's a simple formula. I'm sure it didn't come up very simply, but it's 3.5% of the cost of prior year product sales. And Carol would kill me if I put the actual numbers up, so this is just so you can see. Pure fiction. So looking back, it may appear that we made our campaign plan and shot straight to the top with all the media success. But we had to adapt by dropping some plans that didn't produce results, and we spent more time and money on the efforts that were bringing success. So you can see that the same is true when you face a health challenge, which is how this started for me, as when you face a marketing dilemma. You may fail many, many times before you achieve your goals, but the key is never, never, never give up.